friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a totally unedited surgery in this surgery i am going to share what i was thinking at every step of this surgery this is a case of phacomorphic glaucoma the patient came with intraocular pressure of 60 mm of mercury the anterior chamber is almost flat there is steamy corneal edema decimates membrane folds all these things are there i was not sure that i will be able to do phacomorphification in this case so i am getting prepared for conversion to sics this is a superior erectus brittle suture i'm going to do a peritomy also because there is chemosis of the conjunctiva and if i need sics i was almost uh, on the you know more chance of, of doing sics then feco in this case that's why i did peritomy also and this will reduce the chemosis as pre operative preparation we have administered manitol 200 ml 20% we have given acetazolamide 500 mg and the pressure came down from uh, 60 to 40 mm of mercury and we have taken up this case for surgery now before trying sics i am planning phacomorphification and i want to reduce some pressure from the vitreous cavity so what i am doing is i have asked for a 26 gauze needle and the needle has been attached to a syringe and the piston of the syringe has been removed and now i am going 3 mm behind the limbus and then as we place stroker the same way we are i am placing it in the anterior vitreous cavity and give a some pressure on the surface a little bit of vitreous and fluid came out and this reduced the intraocular pressure to some extent the anterior chamber has formed a little bit little bit and i'm going to place this side port incision first the cornea has become a bit clearer after vitreous tap and this is the side port and some a release of some aqueous and this is an air bubble and you can see the decimate membrane folds after injecting air bubble in the anterior chamber and this is the a trypan blue dye the dye is irrigated and this is adrenaline diluted adrenaline and now i have asked for a uh, hyalocoat in this case because there is very high intralentricular pressure and i thought if i use you know if i use 
hyalucoat, which is a combination of sodium hyaluronate and chondroitin sulfate. Then, I mean, if I use this, this combination, there will be more chance of being successful in doing a minirexis. If I use ASPMC, I may fail in doing minirexis. I just had a thought like this. I don't know whether it is true or not true, but this is what I speculated. And now I'm waiting for the uh, Hilo coat. Sometimes we have to do this. We have to wait for some something which is not routinely used in other surgeries. Since this is a totally unedited surgery, I didn't you know, remove this part of the surgery. I've got the hyalucoat, inject it and fill out the anterior chamber with this. And with hyalucoat, we cannot coat the corneal epithelium, see? It's just, it remains like this. It takes a very long time to get dispersed. If we just flush, it goes in a minute. The next is, I took the keratome and this is the main incision. And now I'm going to do capsular axis. Make a puncture at the center and I could do the minirexis. Even with this hydrocoat, it tends to go to periphery. But I could manage to do a small rexis. Now I'm using a 23G Simco and removing the cortex. I want to remove cortex thoroughly and I want to spend about two minutes time at this stage to remove cortex very nicely, press the you know, nucleus, get the cortex from behind around the equator and aspirate it. So taking a lot of time in doing these maneuvers to get the cortex from behind if we just tap the nucleus and push the nucleus from one side to the other side, then the cortex from behind comes out around the equator. By the Simco itself, I'm trying to rotate the nucleus and sometimes I become successful, sometimes not. There's some cortex on the right side. I'm trying to get it Ultimately, it will come. Yes. And now, this cortex has come. So most of the loose cortex has come out. And now, I'm going to manage this case by fecomulsification, since I could do minirexis and decompress the capsular bag, then other steps will be easy, rather other steps will not be difficult. Again, I filled out the entry chamber with hyalucoat, took SPMC and applied SPMC over the cornea. And now I'm going to cut the, you know, rexus margin. Uh, 
with the vana scissor now i take the iterator forceps hold this capsular tag at this time i find that there is weakness of the jonule also as we do menorexis the other steps becomes easy there's some haziness visibility is not good but we can manage from this point for the last piece for the last nuclear piece we can always take help of the intraocular lens use it as a scaffold and over the intraocular lens we can emulsify the last nuclear piece i'm enlarging the main wound to about 3 mm and now the phaco needle is introduced the nucleus is soft tilt it and go to heminuclei on heminuclei is removed as i'm trying to remove the free nuclear piece the other heminuclei in the bag is rotating now we hold this with vacuum and chop it make it two parts two fragments one fragment is emulsified and then i thought of coming out now in the twisco and now my plan is to implant the lens and over the lens emulsify this nuclear piece since the visibility is not good i cannot see clearly the posterior capsule i cannot see if the posterior capsule is coming forward and going backward or not so whenever we cannot see clearly it is always better to use this technique the iol scaffold technique my assistant was not ready with intraocular lens the main wound is in last to about 3.1 mm and now the intraocular lens is implanted in the capsular bag behind this nuclear piece i'm implanting it in such a way that the leading haptic goes in the capsular bag and the trailing haptic we can see it has gone in the capsular bag and now the posterior capsule is safe the only precaution we should take at this time is we must not touch the anterior surface of the lens with ultrasound when we emulsify this piece so we have to be at the iris plane i made a side port at 7 o'clock and enlarged the side port at 2 o'clock and now i'm going to emulsify this last nuclear piece so 
So here goes the FACO needle and this nuclear piece is massified. Care was taken not to touch the lens when the ultrasound is on. So we are towards the end of the surgery. But there is some cortex. To remove the cortex, I go through the 7 o'clock sideboard and see how easily we can remove the 12 o'clock cortex. How beautifully it came. Whenever the visibility is not good, this is a safer instrument than bimanual irrigation aspiration. This is my personal opinion. When the visibility is not good, Simco is a safer instrument than bimanual irrigation aspiration. Only thing is you have to have a large sideboard. But if you make the sideboards three clock hours away from the main wound, Astigmatism induced by the main wound is neutralized by the side ports. And I usually make the side ports three clock hours away from the main wound. The side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma. And now a final lavage of the anterior chamber and conclusion of the case. going to follow this case and I will make another video of this case uh, where I will attach the post-operative pictures at uh, three days, seven days and one month. After forming the anterior chamber, we check the integrity of the wounds. Now, in this case, since I did uh, a peritomy, I removed the brittle suture and I have asked for this gentamicin and dexamethasone combination, inject it in the conjunctiva, and the conjunctiva swells off and comes near the limbus. We don't have to do any cautery. We don't have to put any suture. And here we conclude the case. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this uh, video will help you in managing your phacomorphic glaucomas.